So I wanted to introduce you to how I've come to use a specific app that I'm using right now uh, that has really changed my presence in the classroom. It's really changed my classroom practice a lot uh, to the point where <laughs> only once when the Wi-Fi went down have I picked up a marker in the classroom in the past uh, semester and a half or two semesters or so. Um, because what I've done is, is used a suite of software and hardware um, to change both what I expect my students to engage with outside before class, how I interact with students inside of the classroom, uh, and then also how I'm able to provide students with a record of what happened during class that they can refer back to after class. So all three phases, before class, during class, after class, I've used this suite of software and hardware to kind of upend uh, my teaching practice. So I want to tell you a little about what that is uh, and give you the opportunity to ask some questions because just to start with a quick story, I was teaching business calculus one evening um, this past semester in, in Conant 463, which is one of those rooms that has solid glass walls on one side. And, um, and there was an iPad committee meeting that was just getting out of uh, the room next door, I think it was. And they happened to be walking past my classroom, and they saw me. I was, at the time, in the middle of the room doing this, and my students were kind of all around me, and stuff was happening up on the screen, and, and they stopped. And they actually interrupted my class. They knocked on my door and said, how are you doing that? Um, so I said, you should come to CARS, because I'm going to talk about it. And so here we are. Um, so why, why did I set about a project like this? What was wrong uh, with, well, what did I perceive as something that was wrong with my teaching practice in the past? Um, so let me just pose this question to you. I'm going to show you a classroom um, and ask the question, in this classroom, in this picture, Who's in charge of this classroom? Who is the authority figure? Who is the expert in the room in this picture? Besides the fact that this person is standing up at the front, I don't think necessarily. Someone's looking out the window. Someone's looking out the window, yeah. If you've, is anyone familiar with bit strips? This is a bit strips cartoon. Um, so, yeah, so right, right here in this room, it's not clear who's in charge. Well, I'll contrast that with rightly or wrongly, kind of what I'm doing to you right now, looks more like this. Who's the authority in this picture? The teacher. The person with the, the little pointer at the front of the room pointed to a pyramid scheme with me at the top and you at the bottom, <laughs> right? Um, so there's a drastic difference in classroom governance. Who is in charge? Who is responsible for the learning that's happening? In whose hands uh, is the educational process being placed into? between those two pictures. And I sort of decided that I wanted my class to be less of this and more of that. Um, because I want my students, I think one of those learning outcomes that transcends discipline is we want our students to take ownership, control of their education. Um, and the little things that we do, uh, I think, have a big impact on how well students buy into that. So in order for my students to take control, I have to seed some control. Um, and one of the little things that this hardware and software suite has let me to do is, is to do that. Um, so what does that look like? <clears throat> well, again, there are three phases of, of the classroom that I use this uh, suite of hardware and software I'll talk about to affect. And the first is the before class part. Um, like I think a lot of faculty members, I recognize that my students don't like reading very much outside of class. And particularly in mathematics, in my field, math textbooks, uh, who was it? Someone said it earlier today. I think it was Ernie. Math textbooks are not written for students to read. Uh, they're written for math writers to write um, and not for students to comprehend. They're written, they're, they're written for people who already know that's what's in them, basically. I think that's how you said it, and I love it. Um, yeah, so, and that is something that transcends the level of our math major as well. Even our upper level students often struggle to read math textbooks for comprehension. So one of the things I wanted to do is to flip that a little bit and provide students with a more multimedia uh, experience outside of the classroom in the form of some short 10 to 15 minute mini lecture videos. So how can I create these videos to provide to my students to give them that pre-class um, introductory lecture experience uh, without having to use class time for that lecture? During class, I wanted to untether myself from the front end, as I'm doing right now. I don't want to be standing at the front of the room and facing my students all the time. I really put a value on being able to sit with my students and to look at a problem with them as opposed to be dictating a problem to them. 
uh, and to make it a more collaborative experience in the classroom while they're working actively in their groups. So I can walk between groups, answering questions, offering hints. I still have control over what's on the screen, but I can be out among my students while I do so. So how do I do that? And then after class, um, I talk fast. You probably all know that by now. Um, I talk fast, and I think a lot of faculty members talk fast. And no matter how slow you talk, there will be students who, who miss things in class discussions and lectures and whatever it is you're doing in class. So I also wanted to provide students with a record of what happened in our class discussion, especially if there are little critical moments where I know here's where the big finish is coming in. I want to be able to capture this for the record. So how do I capture that classroom moment in a way that I can give students access to it afterwards for clarification, but also for reflection? I could, I haven't done this yet, um, assign them little reflective assignments. You know listen to what we were talking about in class one more time, and does it mean the same thing now that it did when you heard it before, or so forth. So I think there are a lot of use cases for that after class piece. So enough talk, enough motivation. Here's the hardware software suite itself that I'm using at this very moment. Uh, it's called Dosiri. Uh, there are a number of different apps out there that, that do this kind of thing, but I have not seen one that does so many of the phases of this, of this picture and does them so well. I'm not being compensated by Dosiri in any way for saying this. I really, I, I, don't, I don't like hawking software, but this is the only thing I've seen that really does all of these things and does them well. So how does it work? Um, on the one hand, I have an iPad um, in my hand uh, during class, and the iPad is running a Dosiri app on iOS. So an app is running on here. Um, that app is actually free. Um, but what the iPad has the ability to do when Dosiri is running on it is a variety of things. First of all, uh, just using the iPad itself, I can create presentations and annotations. So I can create little whiteboard-like uh, annotated uh, presentations just on the iPad within Dosiri um, and do it that way. I can also, where the real power of Dosiri comes in, is when the iPad and a PC or a Mac computer connect up and the PC or Mac has to be running the Dosiri software package, and that's the package that costs the money, 30 bucks. It's fairly minimal, um, in my opinion, anyway. And when it connects up, you actually get quite a bit more functionality. The iPad has the ability to control the computer, so as I'm advancing slides, for example, on the laptop over here through the Dosiri app on my iPad. Um, of course, I'm also annotating uh, what's on the screen as we go along, and there's a whole variety of different paint brushes and highlighters and various tools that you can use for annotation uh, along the way. Um, and it's a reciprocal relationship, too, because at the same time, these slides that you're seeing up here are actually slides on my computer that are being mirrored onto my iPad so that I know where to annotate what. Um, so my computer's display is being shown here on the app along the way. Um, and basically, what's on the computer screen, it just forms a canvas, just a background canvas for the annotation that goes on top of it. So it can be slides, as I have here, or it can be any other software application. When I taught business calculus, I would have Excel up on the screen and be able to annotate on top of an Excel screen uh, as I go along using Dosiri, and to be able to control Excel as I walk around. <coughs> uh, it's not quite as nice as having a keypad or a keyboard to enter data, but I could generate a chart, for example, from the back of the room just by clicking through the Excel menus via Dosiri. Um, and connectivity-wise, um, the, the computer itself is then connected to the projector, so there's no direct projector to iPad connection necessary, although IT tells me they're going to be building that out uh, over the next, uh, what, six months now. or so? Now? Okay, over the next now. Uh, fantastic. So uh, AirPlay, the AirPlay um, protocol will help you do that as well, and for that you don't even need a PC intermediary. You can just show your iPad on the screen, um, but using Dosiri you can do it via the computer as I'm doing now. Um, and the iPad connects to that computer and to the network just via Wi-Fi, so there's no Bluetooth or anything else um, that it just syncs up that way. Um, so that's the, the connectivity environment. Um, and so it lets me address those needs that I saw uh, in those three phases in a variety of different ways. So beginning with, again, beginning with a class that I had not taught before uh, in the form of Abstract Algebra 2. This was last spring uh, that I did this. I began, embarked on a process of making these pre-class lecture videos to introduce students to topics. Um, and best practices for your flipped classroom are that those videos be fairly short, 5 to 15 minutes, so don't think of capturing an entire hour-long lecture. Capture little bits and pieces of it that a student can watch in, in small chunks um, that proves to be more engaging. 
um, covering one or two core concepts a piece. Um, so I, I generated about half of the semester's worth of those videos last year and the other half when I taught the course again this year. Um, and just to give you a flavor for what those look like, I took those videos and posted them on YouTube. Uh, those mini lecture videos I made before class are just me and not my students, uh, and I've chosen to make them publicly available on YouTube. You don't have to, but um, that's the way that, that I went with it. We have exactly two non-real groups, which gives us complex conjugation in our automorphism group. And we have a fifth degree intermediate field, which we've shown implies the existence of an element of order five in our Galois group. Therefore, the Galois group with this polynomial being all of S5 means that this polynomial does not have a solvable Galois group, and because it doesn't have a solvable Galois group, P is not solvable in radicals. <laughs> we took all semester to prove this theorem, and so this was, this was worth a little celebration. Nothing like a QED that has taken about nine or ten hours of videos as dense as this one to find. So, I do a little post-processing on the videos using iMovie uh, a little bit sometimes, just to add those little kind of extra things to hopefully you know, provide a little bit of humor and was a very dense subject. Another thing I love about YouTube in specific for hosting these videos is it also gives you the opportunity to slow the video down. Um, and I've, I've gotten a lot of feedback on my videos, mostly positive, but a lot of people say you talk too fast, and you can actually slow YouTube down to half speed. Um, Let's see if it'll actually do this for me here. Hats off to you. You've made it this far. It's just You and I together. <laughs> funny things happen to your voice when you, when you play it at 50%. Um, but because I talk so fast, some students find that slowing it down, once you get past the initial giggle factor um, actually does help to, to absorb the material a little bit better. So those are my pre-class videos. Um, and those I have now about uh, 10 or 11 hours worth of a playlist that is pretty much an e-textbook now uh, through the entire Math 302 course. Um, let's see, where's, where are my slides? Those back here. Um, and then during class I do what I'm doing with you right now, and that's wander around the room with the iPad and, and, and while groups are working on things uh, and just sort of share my physical presence uh, with them in their teams. Um, but then during critical moments during class, I'll use the video capture functionality on the Doceri app again in class to capture the discussion that happens and then post those discussions that happen as unlisted videos on YouTube so you can't search them from, from outside. But students, I send the links to the students through an RSS feed uh, on Moodle uh, so that they can go back and review uh, what happened in class. And that's an excellent question. Um, if I were in your class, I wouldn't like it. Well, yes. Um, so I, have, I do have that discussion with students at the beginning of the semester. That, you know, some, some of, honestly, though, the microphone on this iPad is, is not, doesn't have that great of an audio, audio field. So probably the question you just asked wasn't captured on here very uh, intelligently. My picture, I don't want up there. Oh, no, your picture, definitely not. No. So what, goes, what gets captured is just what's on the screen, and that's not, uh, that's not video. That's just whiteboard. Uh, Whiteboard scratching and audio, so it looks something more like this. So here I had a, just a document in the background and some annotation on top of it. And so it's kind of hard to hear any of the discussion that's not coming from the person holding the iPad. Um, but then that becomes an RSS feed uh, inside of Moodle so that a student can say, well, what were we talking about in last class? Or, oh, I missed a class last week. Let me find out what happened. Like, what are the key parts of the discussion? Um, and so they can go back and review that after the fact as well. I'm trying to find other ways of using this technology to get my students a little more engaged. So one of the things that happened this semester is for the final project in Math 302, I had students write up a, a proof of an important result um, using you know, typesetting language and so forth. And one of my students who is at least as much of an iPad uh, addict as I am, um, there was a point in this proof that she was really just having a hard time articulating in words. And honestly, I looked at the source material she was working with. Those other authors had just as much difficulty articulating it in words. They just pretty much punted on it. It's a very difficult to write down idea. And so she made a, a video using Doceri. She downloaded the Doceri app to her iPad, made a little whiteboard video where she 
talks through uh, the rest of the proof, uh, and then submitted that to me as the second half of her assignment. So, so the first half she wrote down in typeset and everything, the second half to finish it, she made a video and submitted that to me instead. And I said, great, that's awesome. Um, she definitely aced the project. But um, so she kind of went above and beyond there. Um, I also am interested. That's a good question, probably, because it probably takes me longer to watch a, an eight or nine minute video that a student makes uh, than to look at a one or two page paper. Um, so yeah, that would increase my can grading time. I had a small class. Yes, you can. Just, yes, you can speed it up. I encourage you to try it. It's, it's almost as funny as slowing it down. Um, but I would also love to engage some of our education-minded students, like our peer tutors, uh, or even our students taking uh, math for elementary education, in making some of these educational pedagogical videos. Um, for, for example, for supplemental instruction purposes. Uh, a lot of my tutors, they answer the same questions in math services week after week after week. What do I do with this exponent? Oh, here, let me show you what to do with this exponent. But making some little pedagogical videos using a suite like this, I think involving my tutors in that could be a really neat project. We can build kind of a BSU library of video tutorials using whiteboard software like this. Um, Doceri itself is an iOS only uh, app right now. Um, there is an Android app called Explain Everything that has a lot of the similar uh, functionality to it. I don't have an Android tablet, so I don't have any experience with it. But if you do try it out and want to feed that back to me, I would love to hear uh, how it goes. For me, Doceri is a way because I'm an Apple fanboy, I suppose. Um, but um, given that so many of our students and faculty now have iPads on their desks, though, uh, I believe it's a, a good investment. Um, and I know I've seen a, a couple of my colleagues now getting Doceri for themselves. Because um, the app, again, is free. Uh, there's also a trial version of the computer app that works as well. It just puts a little watermark down in the corner that says created by Doceri. Um, but it has full functionality for 30 days for you to try it out. And then the, the PC app itself is only 30 bucks uh, or so for an individual license. So it really has, like I say, changed my presence within my classroom as well as the diversity and depth of the content that I can provide my students with outside of the classroom. Um, and like I say, feedback's been very positive. I think I have tens of thousands of views uh, for all my ver various videos, uh, 9 or 10 or 11 hours of video that make up the e-textbook for Math 302 right now, because there just isn't that much YouTube content on abstract algebra at the moment um, beyond, say, Khan Academy. Um, and I personally think Doceri just makes stuff look a lot snappier than most of Khan Academy's videos do. So I would definitely, if you have an iPad and you're not sure what to do with it, if you're not sure how it might connect into your teaching uh, in some way, um, give the interactive whiteboard thing a try because it really, it's turned things upside down for me in, in a real way in the classroom. And now I'm even more of an addict to this thing than I ever was before. <laughs>